friends and welcome to my channel if you're new or welcome back if you are back. If you are new, hi, my name's Rabbit and my pronouns are they, them. And today I have a bunch of DIYs to show you. Originally I had a video where I showed how I made these felt patches and at first they were in a vlog and then I thought it was kind of weird so I decided to just put them in their own video and then I ended up getting a big creative streak I guess and just made a bunch of like Halloween DIYs so I figured I'd just throw them all together in one big video so you can see all my different creations that I've been getting up to this month. Uh, we'll start with the felt patches which is how I made a bunch of my like Halloween vests and stuff as well. So if you're interested in that tutorial that's first but timestamps will be below for everything else as well as links to other things that inspired me. I'm super excited to show you guys all the delightful and exciting Halloween creations that have come out of the cave this month. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into it. So we're starting the vlog out with a little bit of crafting. I've drawn out this picture of like a vintage style Halloween cat and I'm just pinning it to the black fabric. Basically I wanted to make some little felt patches because Cage's birthday is coming up and this was a little gift that I wanted to make him as like a last minute thing was two patches of our two cats lemon and tuna. So after I've cut out the base of the fabric I can go ahead and cut out the details starting with the little white part of like the lower muzzle and I'm just pinning that to a piece of white felt and using some fabric scissors to cut it out and that's basically all you're gonna do for every detail on the pattern except for the ones that you're gonna want to stitch on you can go ahead and tape your pattern back together as you go as needed but I'm just going ahead and cutting out two of each um, little mouth little eyes etc etc one of my cats is very symmetrical tuna and then lemon is a little more asymmetrical so I'm accounting for that but otherwise everything is more or less the same in terms of the base shape and and um, their little nose and mouth and that kind of thing. Um, they also have different colored eyes, so Lemon gets green eyes and Tuna goes ahead and gets some yellow eyes, but otherwise the shape and everything is the same. I'm just cutting out all these little pieces. I think I might have called my fabric felt at some point, but most of it is fleece. Other than the black background, all the little details I'm using are fleece, but basically as long as it doesn't fray, you can pretty much use anything. And I'm just going ahead and cutting out all the pattern pieces, including a little hat at the end. Um, for each of them and a little square of background so lemon goes ahead and gets a yellow fleece background and tuna gets an orange one i'm cutting out two more or less square pieces of fabric out of that and at this point you could glue everything down before you start sewing it but i was in a bit of a rush and didn't feel like waiting for the glue to dry so i'm going ahead and just sewing everything directly on so piece by piece you can pin your fabric pieces down and sew them ahead on. I'm mostly using thread that matches the fabric color but for a couple of pieces that I'd like the contrast or if I don't have the correct color of thread you know it is what it is. I would recommend if you're not gluing everything down that you make sure that things are in the correct position uh, relatively before you sew them down but yeah just going ahead and sewing all of the little face pieces and accessories and stuff on and once all the fabric is together then I can go ahead and add details with just some embroidery floss so I'm going ahead and taking a big needle and adding like a sort of eye shape a sort of um, ear fluff, a little bit of whiskers, um, a little eye sparkle, basically just a couple of little details with the embroidery floss that would be too fine to cut out pieces of felt for. And here is the final product. Um, I ended up adding a pom-pom to each of their hats and I feel like it ties it all together. But there they are, all done, and Cage really liked them and we haven't decided yet what they're gonna go on, um, but for now they're really really cute and he enjoyed them. And uh, just for reference, this is the same technique that I used to make all of my felt patches for all of the vests and other Halloweenies that I have made. Okay, so pretty much since last year I've wanted candy corn jewelry and after making some candy corn buttons I figured I could just transfer the same technique to some earrings and stuff. So I'm going ahead with some white polymer clay to start. It's super old, so ignore how crumbly it is. I'm rolling it out into a nice thin snake, and then I'm going to go ahead and do that with orange and yellow as well. The white will be the thinnest, followed by the orange, and then the yellow will be the largest. I'm making two different sizes of it, one for earrings that are bigger and one for a necklace which is smaller. I didn't actually have any orange clay, so I had to go ahead and mix some of that up by just, you know, basic color theory combining red and yellow. Um, it took a hot minute but if you have to do this I would recommend taking your time with it and like mixing them up well because the last time I did it I didn't mix it up with super well and I definitely like this one better. Um, basically I'm going ahead and just continuing to fold and roll over the clay and 
uh, flatten it out with a sort of rolling pin situation until it's a really consistent color. I like to use a piece of parchment paper so it doesn't stick while I'm trying to do this and once it's uh, the correct color I can roll out a tube of that and finally do the same with my yellow. Once I have my three tubes of color I can arrange them in the correct order and squish them into place. I learned this technique from a channel that I will link below. They are fantastic. I just kind of slightly modified it to my purposes and once they're in a row I can go ahead and cut them out into a little triangle shape and look it's already looking like a sweet little candy corn and just continue cutting down my little line until I have as many candy corns as will fit. I'm only actually using like two of them for the earrings and one of them for the necklace but I like to make extras just to have on hand for future craft projects when I do stuff like this. Plus that way I can pick the best ones to make my earrings out of instead of being stuck with just like one option if they're like a little bit wonky. Once they're all cut out I decided to add a tiny bit of extra texture by putting in a little dent sort of thing. Like, you know how candy corns have those little lines in them? Um, I just added that with a little tool. Then to make them into earrings and such, I'm just putting in a little eye pin at the top um, and just poking it through. Hopefully it'll stay. You can use some clay glue if you're worried about that before you bake it. I'm just gonna attach all the extra findings once it's done baking, baking it as directed. And once it's done, I wanted to add a little bit of shine. So I'm taking some epoxy resin. Make sure you're wearing a mask, working in a ventilated area and using gloves. I didn't have gloves. So so I'm using some plastic bags, which kind of covers them. It was annoying, but it's fine. Um, using the UV resin, so it just needs a little light to charge. And once it's all dry, I can go ahead and complete the process. I'm just adding a little chain to the earrings so they'll be dangling a little bit and then adding the little fish hook at the top. I feel like I usually get asked what videos I'm watching in the background so I'll link all the ones that I can remember below and if I don't remember which specific video I'll just link the channel. But yeah, it was a lot of fun to just have the day to craft away and make myself some little candy corn jewelry. So once the earrings are done I can go ahead and make the necklace by just sliding the charm onto a jump ring and then a chain. And then for the hair clips I didn't add an eye pin to those because I didn't think they needed one. I originally tried to hot glue them to a hair clip, but it didn't work. I ended up using super glue, but um, that was a discovery that I found out later. Regardless, I think it all works out really cute. So this is how the set is looking all together. I had to change out these again because even super glue wouldn't hold them on those little like clips that I had. I ended up using these like straight ones that don't bend so much when you're opening and closing them. But yeah, little candy corn hair clips, adorable. Candy corn earrings, super happy with these guys as well. Little candy corn necklace, I've paired it all with my like vintage Halloween sweater that I DIY'd all the patches on and this little collar that I DIY'd last year and just feeling so candy corn cute. I'm excited to wear this set out and about. So I'm taking one of my favorite spiked chokers and using a screwdriver to remove all of those spikes from it. In order to keep them secure and make the following process easier, I just put them through a piece of cardstock that I'm gonna throw out after. And I'm going outside and spraying them with a layer of Mr. Super Clear, but any kind of matte spray should work if you don't have this around. Once the Mr. Super Clear is dry, I'm getting some white paint and going ahead and painting about halfway up the spikes with a layer of white, waiting until it's dry and then doing another layer so it's nice and opaque. Then I'm going ahead with some yellow and using my paintbrush to get um, the bottom all done in yellow basically going as far so that they're touching and I can just do the orange stripe uh, more freely I found this was the easiest way to do it my yellow paint was a lot more uh, watery I guess than my white paint and I had to do like three layers of that to get it nice but eventually it was good and once the white and the yellow paint are dry I can go in with a little bit of orange paint which I had to add a little bit of red to because my orange was just so neon and add a little stripe um, to the spikes. This was extra helpful to have them lined up on a even surface because I could kind of estimate what was even for each of them and kind of do a little guideline. I'm using a big paintbrush for the main a uh, bit of painting and then just using a teeny tiny detail paintbrush to get the little detail so it's nice and smooth. Once it's completely dry, I sprayed it again with Mr. Super Clear and then I'm taking my epoxy resin and going ahead and coating all those spikes with the resin. As usual, gloves, uh, ventilation, mask, everything very important for this process. I like UV resin because it dries super, super fast. I also just like leave them in the sun 
over the day and I went to work and when I got back home I was able to take them off of their little paper uh, holder and screw them back onto the choker and now I have this amazing candy corn choker. So this is the candy corn choker. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Super, super pleased with how it turned out. I don't know how durable it'll be. For the other times that I've done candy corn spikes on like jackets and stuff, it stayed pretty well, so I have high hopes. Um, but we'll have to see. I'll keep you updated if I remember. Anyway. Very good stuff. Okay, so I've wanted a spooky picnic basket for ages and I figured that Halloween was finally the time to make it come to life. I think Toxic Tears did a video about this like a year ago or something, so I'll definitely be sure to link hers below. I'm starting out with some red velvet that was left over from another project and I'm just tracing out uh, the bottom of the basket. I'm just going ahead and cutting out the basic shape just using some space for the seam allowance. The red velvet by itself was a bit bright so I decided to layer a piece of thrifted black lace over it. Um, I think this helped a lot and it just has like a really pretty floral pattern so I'm going ahead and just cutting out the same size of that fabric. Then for the internal part of the liner I had this like tutorial I was going to follow and everything and I was measuring it out and I'll link the tutorial below because the lady that did it was absolutely fantastic but I ended up using this piece of black velvet that was the base of like a skirt and honestly it was stretchy enough and the right size enough that I didn't really need to make adjustments for it so though I had all the measurements ready to go I was like oh it actually works like that so I decided not to do anything of that just cutting a little bit off the bottom so that it was the right length for the basket but once the sides of the basket walls are complete I can go ahead and pin the two layers of the bottom fabric together and then pin the layers of the wall around that um, good side to good side and since I'm using an old skirt I'm gonna put the hem at the top of the basket so I'll be able to feed a string through it later so I can tighten in the liner as needed. I had to gather the fabric in a couple of areas to make it fit around the base of the liner but once it's all pinned together I can go ahead and use my sewing machine to attach everything and I'm measuring it out and it looks pretty good. The only thing is that it doesn't quite fit around the handle so I'm just cutting a slit in the velvet so it will fit and the basket had all this like plasticky pink Easter type ribbon so I'm going ahead and just getting rid of that before I paint it because this color will not do for a spooky picnic bag at least not for this project. Um, so once I'm ready to go, I take it outside and I gotta say, I'm doing this under the cover of night because I don't want any of my neighbors to yell at me. I mean, they're all nice, so I don't think they would. Um, but yeah, I didn't film it because nighttime and uh, secret spray painting. So regardless, um, three layers of spray paint later, we have a black basket and I can go ahead and attach the lining that I made to it. Like I mentioned, the hem is already kind of sewn in there, but if I didn't have one, I would go ahead and sew the top of the fabric down so I could have like a little sleeve to put a string through. Despite the fact that it's in there, some of the stitching has come apart, so I'm just going ahead with my sewing machine and fixing the couple of spots that need a little bit of care in that area. But once it's all complete and together, I can just take some old ribbon attach a safety pin to one end of it and feed it through the whole thing. That way I can use it to tighten the liner around the basket. So once it's all fed through, I can go ahead and tie it in a bow and the basket is looking pretty cute already. Um, it's still quite simple, so I wanted to add a couple of little decorations, but I decided to go a little less over the top than I usually do. I'm starting with some dark red lace from the thrift store that I got ages ago and just pinning it around the edge of the basket. I considered hot gluing the this, but I didn't want to make like a mess with the velvet and the lace and the hot glue so I ended up just using a needle and thread to hand stitch all the way around because I was too lazy to take it off and use my sewing machine to try to do this. I also had these flowers that I got from the thrift store a while ago and I'm taking them outside and spray painting them black and I have just a bunch of like little charms and pieces of ribbon and a bunch of stuff around that I'm just gonna play with before I do a full design. I ended up using this scrap spiderweb mesh that I am just obsessed with and have been dwindling my supply of but these are my leftover scraps and I'm going ahead and trimming them into sort of long uh, tenderly things and then tying that around one of the basket edges. I originally tried to add a bunch of extra ribbon to it but it was a little bit too much and I wanted to keep this a little bit more understated and elegant so we're just keeping it with the spiderweb mesh and tying that in a knot around. To make it look a little extra fancy, I made a bow out of some black satin ribbon and hot glued that over top of the black spiderweb mesh. And then I'm taking some red satin ribbon that I got from the thrift store 
and twirling it around the handle because I did honestly like the design that they had with the pink ribbon I just didn't like the color of it for this particular project so I'm using the dark red instead and it makes it look almost clowny in my opinion um, and then I'm taking those black spray painted flowers and tying them together with a ribbon so I can set them at the base of the other handle and then I'm just gonna go ahead and secure that with a piece of black satin ribbon in a way that I can take it off if I need to take out the basket line or to clean it or what clean up spills or whatever whatever the end result in my opinion is super delightful I'm so excited to take this out for spooky picnics in the graveyard with cage so this is how the basket turned out I think it is absolutely stunning. I'm so, so happy with it. It reminds me of like something that Morticia Adams might bring on a picnic or something, but there's also a little bit of like a clowny element and like just a little bit of like red with the black, I think ties it together. Cause I was worried that if it was all black, it would be kind of hard to see any of the contrast within it. But with the red and black, I think it works out really nicely. I can't wait to fill it with like vegan cookies and maybe some wine and some candles and just take it to the cemetery for a little picnic under the stars. Like it just, oh, that would be my dream. So I'm very excited for that and um, hope to see this in a vlog coming soon. So I've had this black jack-o'-lantern t-shirt since last year that I found at the thrift store and I've always thought it was cool, but I always thought it would be really fun to translate that to same design into a tank top. So I got this orange one from the thrift store and I'm going in with a marker and paper and trying out some different designs wanted um a moon face originally because i think those moon face jack-o-lanterns just look so vintage but it uh i don't know it looked a little bit weird with the design in in my opinion the other one just red is more jack-o-lantern-y but i'm just going ahead and sketching out some face designs until i'm happy with one of them i ended up going with the classic kind of triangle eyes i think it looks super cute once i'm happy with my design out of paper i can go ahead and glue that to some adhesive vinyl paper. I get this stuff at Michael's and it's super easy for making one-time use stencils. Once it's all glued down to the stencil paper, I can tape that to my cutting board and use my X-Acto knife to just cut out those designs. This was a super easy stencil to make so I didn't bother to like save it for future projects or anything. Once the designs are cut out, I can remove the piece that I don't need and I have my stencils ready to go. So just placing those onto the tank top and making sure to try it on before I do anything to make sure that I like the placement of it uh, but once I know that I do I can go ahead and use a little bit of masking tape to just cover up the spots that I'm worried that I might get some uh, ink on if I'm not careful. Putting a piece of cardboard between my shirt so that it won't bleed and then just taping off any sections that might be in danger of getting ink on them because the stencil is actually a little bit tiny since I'm just using old scraps of this vinyl paper that I had. Have this screen printing ink and a makeup sponge and I'm just going ahead and super lightly dabbing in the design. It's way better to do multiple layers lightly than one layer super thick. That way you don't get any bleeding, you get nice clean lines. Lines, um, just easier. I think I went ahead and just did two or three layers making sure that each layer is dry in between and once it's completely dry I can go ahead and peel off my stencil and check out my design. I think it looks really really cute. I'm super excited to wear this tank around. Um, it's way thinner than I originally thought it would be so I um, definitely need to like layer it with some stuff but it's fine. We'll live. I think it'll be a great like sleep shirt if nothing else. So this is how the little jack-o'-lantern tank top turned out. I think it looks super cute. Honestly, this tank top is quite loose, so I had to like kind of tie it up, but it's cute. Like I said, very transparent, so I had to wear like some fishnet shirts underneath and everything, but I think it's adorable. I think this is a super, super simple DIY that um, you don't need like artistic skill, quote unquote, to do. Just cut out a jack-o'-lantern face. You can do it. You can even freehand this if you don't want to go for a stencil. This was like the vision. I wanted to like wear it with like a fishnet top. Um, this is obviously just a pair of ripped fishnet tights and a pair of regular tights that I have ripped a hole in the crotch and worn as a shirt. And I think it looks precious. So that's the look. Thumbs up for this DIY. Super simple. Instant Halloween. All right, next I have this t-shirt that I just happened to find last time I was at the thrift store and it just screamed candy corn to me and I had to make my uh, candy corn dream come true with it. So I'm going ahead and sketching out a little picture of a candy corn on a piece of paper to use as a stencil. And you know a stencil is good when you absolutely don't follow it at all when you cut it out, but hey, whatever, it's fine. And I ended up doing like a really big candy corn and it looks like a little bit juvenile um, and uh, corny for lack of a better term, but I adore it. I think it looks so fun. And I'm just using a little bit of 
fleece um, to cut out all the layers of colors that I need. So the middle layer is orange, the bottom layer is yellow, and the top layer is white. And once I have all my pieces of the candy corn out, I decided to make a little bit of a background with some black scrap felt that I had lying around. So I'm just lining up the candy corn and cutting out the shape that I need. You can do the candy corn either like smaller um, and also off to the side to make it look a little bit more mature, but if you don't care, it's a candy corn shirt. Like there's, the maturity was left at the door with this. I am doing it right in the middle, like a big kindergarten t-shirt. I love it. I don't care. I'm going ahead and hand stitching the fabric together, just using some white thread because I figured it would be like semi unintrusive to the design, but still adding a little bit of detail. And once I have it stitched all around, I can line it up to the center of the t-shirt. As I said, the center is where I like it, but if you want it to be more understated off to the side and smaller is like a way to do that, maybe on a black t-shirt instead of a super bright orange and yellow one. But anyway, going ahead with a zigzag stitch and black thread to just attach it all around. I was bored of hand stitching at this point and just wanted the project to be complete and look at it go once i take out all the needles it's so freaking cute i i really like the results so this is how the candy corn t-shirt turned out i think it's super cute i think rolled up it makes it like i don't know extra fun and like almost summery but i still really enjoy it yes excited to wear this out and about maybe even with like kind of my overall dress it could give like a super fun trick-or-treat kind of vibe also gone extra candy corn with like the hair clips and the earrings for the look so just feeling it very much it's a very very comfy t-shirt so i am enjoying it next i have this backpack that has been mine since i was in kindergarten and before that it was my brother's and i was obsessed with it as a kid just kept it all these years and it's really good size for camping but it doesn't really match my aesthetic anymore so i'm going ahead and going through my stencils that i've made in the past and uh, finding any kind of smaller and thinner stencils that would go well bands movies whatever i can find that will fit I'm taking some black fabric, just this old thrifted t-shirt in this case, and with a little bit of parchment paper to protect the stencil, going ahead and ironing it on so that I can make some patches out of this. I was partly doing this because I had a bunch of leftover patches that I experimented with um, a couple months ago and I wanted to use them on something, but a lot of them didn't fit because they were too big, so I ended up using a lot of new patches. It's fine, whatever. Regardless, going ahead and once they're all on, I can take some white stencil ink. First time using this, I really enjoyed it. And a makeup sponge and just going ahead and dabbing it on. Usually I use white acrylic paint, so if you don't have stencil ink, you can totally use that instead, but I figured why not give this new thing a try. Once they're all stenciled on, usually three layers is good enough to get a nice opaque thing. I can take off the stencils and save them for future use. Look how cute all my patches look. I think they're really nice. Then I have all these old ones. So these ones I made after I made my Buffy jacket, I just was like, let me make some horror ladies. So we've got Bride of Frankenstein, Wednesday, Elvira, Lydia, Vampira, Miss Argentina, um, Samantha from The Love Witch, uh, freaking Morticia, the spooky ladies. So I had made these a while ago and I just needed a project to put them on so I have my little backpack and I'm going ahead and just playing around with the patch placement until I'm happy with how it's all looking and once it's covered to my heart's content I can go ahead and hand stitch everything I wanted to use my sewing machine at first but there was like some sort of plasticky lining inside the backpack that I didn't want to mess with too much so hand stitching it was and I got to just like hang out and while I watched Angel with Cage we got to do a little bit of crafting or at least I did while we watched our show <laughs> ended up being super super happy with the final result I feel like now I can go out camping and hiking and doing my things with a backpack that actually matches my aesthetic um, instead of my like either hippie one or this one that you know had my kindergarten you know the class still on it had a lot of fun making this and was super super pleased with the final result so this is how the backpack turned out i think it looks best when it's like really pooched out where you can like see all of its beautiful patches i'm really happy with it um but obviously it like kind of usually stays a little bit more pressed together like that um, where you can't read or see a lot of like the faces very well when it's all crunched together. But I still think that the overall effect is pretty cool. I considered doing patches on the straps, but honestly, it's fine. I think it looks really awesome from the back and I'm excited to wear it out and about. I think it's like such a glow up. <laughs> 
um, if you could say. Um, and I gotta show you my favorite thing about this backpack, because I remember when I was in kindergarten, this was like the coolest thing ever in my opinion, and I like could not wait to show people like how cool my backpack was because I had this element. So are you ready? Okay. Bottom, you can unzip, and it has a little rain jacket so when it rains your backpack doesn't get wet i just have always thought that was the best thing ever and the fact that like most backpacks don't have that is a crime and a scam in my opinion so yeah love that i just think it's like the best little thing i added rocky horror picture show as like the patch that covers that but um yeah, got a bunch of band patches, a couple movie patches, and uh, just one or two spooky lady patches. We got Wednesday on this side, like the, not the original Wednesday, but like the 90s Wednesday. Very, very cute. And then Lydia on the front. It's like a picture of Lydia with her doll. Um, it, there's like that Beetlejuice photo shoot that she's wearing the red dress. She has the doll on her shoulder, so that's what that's based on. And I really like it. I'm excited to wear this around. So, thumbs up for the patch pack. I've also considered adding like chains and studs and O-rings and like hardware hanging off of it. But for now, I'm just keeping practicality at like the top of my list. And if that means more simple and just like fabric patches and that's it, that is what it is. All right, so the next craft is out of Halloween hair ribbons. And I'm starting by just kind of going through all of my fabric stashes, my laces and my ribbons, looking for things that are black, orange, spooky in any way, shape or form, sparkly, textured, uh, yarn, anything that especially is like too short to use in other projects I'm looking for. So any kind of weird scraps are super, super helpful for this. I have a lot of things that I save, like these weird ribbons that people tie like gifts with or that come when you buy a pack of like hand towels or whatever that are Halloween based. So this is a great opportunity to use up a bunch of those. The idea behind this uh, project is kind of like those strawberry switchblade sort of hair ribbons that they used to do back in the 80s that are very like I don't know, ethereal and fun, crafty looking. I'm using a bunch of fabric scraps too that I had left over from my best projects, just basically cutting the bigger pieces into super thin strips. Um, and then I'll go ahead and sew them in half with my sewing machine so there's not like a bad side, quote unquote. Yeah, basically I thought this would just be like a really fun way to try to upcycle and reuse some of my Halloweeny scraps that I love to save up. So I'm going ahead with the sewing machine and just roughly sewing these things in half. With this project, nothing was exact or perfect or measured. It was all just super haphazard and kind of go with the flow, which is kind of my favorite way to do projects. I measured out a approximate length that I would like the ribbons to go down, and I'm cutting out stuff to go with that. One of the things that I really wanted to use up with this project was the kind of seam edges of like hand towels and stuff that I'd been using in previous projects, like this black and orange one is from a tea towel that yeah when you're making like vests and stuff it's hard to use up that harder edge uh, but in hair ribbon stuff it's super easy and um, fantastic to use putting together a bunch of little scraps of fabric one of my favorite things that I had was this spiderweb mesh uh, fabric that I just cut into some strips and points I'm trying to make them somewhat equivalent I wanted to kind of wear them as pigtails um, so that's the idea behind that. I also have this like fuzzy yarn that I thought added a lot of cool texture to it. Once I'm satisfied with the volume, I can go ahead and with a hot glue gun and some black ribbon, kind of attach them all together. I kind of used this strip of ribbon as like the base and put the bigger stuff behind and the smaller stuff in front. Once everything is attached, I can fold the ribbon over so it kind of makes a little packet of ribbon at the top. And then I just go ahead and hot glue that to a hair clip. And I think the result ended up being super cute and 80s and crafty and weird and everything that I wanted it to be. So this is how the hair ribbons have turned out. I think they look super, super cute, especially with like pigtails or if you have long hair, I think they would look extra, extra cute. I was thinking of putting on a wig for this section, but I can't be bothered right now. Uh, yeah, this is, this is the look with the, with the hair extensions, fake hair, hair ribbons. That's what they are, hair ribbons. Um, I also think it's like super fun because I have a lot of different hair clips so I can put like bones or pumpkins or little gravestones or candy corns or like whatever like in the front. So then it looks like there's the extensions but they're like attached to like a fun hair clip. So yes, interesting and fun look. And I usually like pin them in the front and then like make them go around the back. I, I think it would be, like work really fun at like kind of a dance night. 
the last one I wasn't even sure whether to film or not, honestly. Uh, super simple, but I had this scarf that I found at the thrift store, this beautiful burnt orange color, and I'm using this little ruler thing that was in my uh, sewing kit. I just for the first time ever recently saw someone use these, I think, at the Stitches video, and I was like, oh, that's what they're for. But um, yeah, going ahead and measuring out just kind of six inches for the whole thing. I wasn't sure how long it needed to be or how thick it needed to be, so I'm just, you know, trying my best. Then cutting out that long strip of fabric with my rotary cutter and then trimming the corners of it so they're kind of pointy. Going ahead with my sewing machine and hemming all the edges down, and that's literally it. I just wanted like a big fluffy neck bow, and now I have one, so there. So this is how the neck ribbon turned out. I think it looks really, really cute. Basically, the inspiration for this was that I have a coworker who I really like. They're super into like anime and J fashion and this kind of stuff, and I remember last year, it might have been around spooky season, but they wore like kind of a ruffly shirt with like a big oversized bow, and it just was like the cutest look on the planet, in my opinion, and ever since then, I'd wanted to make like kind of a spooky version of that and then I found this vampire shirt in black with my cousin when I was thrifting and I was like that would be the perfect thing to pair with this so when I found that scarf I was like perfect color let me just cut a strip out of it so I wasn't even sure if I wanted to include the making of that in the video because it was so simple but like literally I love like a big oversized bow on the front of the shirt. It feels, yeah, like a character out of an anime or a cartoon. It feels super sweet and vintage and yeah, I almost feel like, you know those like really spooky vintage black cats with like a big bow on their necks? That's like what I feel like with this. It's it's so fun. So uh, yes, super, super pleased with it. Ridiculously easy and um, thumbs up from me. Thank you so, so much for watching till the end. That means so, so much to me. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or night or whenever it happens to be that you are watching. Have a good one. Give yourself a big hug for me and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!